he will go up to Exmouth of Broome once or twice a year. So uh, I've tried to make a little pact with myself that the next next time next couple of trips yeah. that he makes up the northern way, assuming my schedule allows Works it, out. yeah, I'll I'll go shoot off as well. It's too good a place um, not to do it. Yeah, and I feel probably at this time life's never going to get less busy, Mm-mm. so may as well just go and do things, yeah. <laughs> which you could probably attest to more than anyone else. Yeah, but last time we saw you, Linz, was what. December, December. We've done before. Yeah. So it's been a little while since then. And just before, uh, or just as we were talking last, mm-hmm. you were shooting off to the wonderful, exciting world of farm work. Oh my gosh. I know, I can't actually believe sometimes. I'm like, I can't believe the beginning of this year began with me on a farm. And how yeah. like, <laughs> at the time it felt like the longest time in the world. And like now we're nearly in September and I've done so many things since I left the farm. Yeah, it's just gone so quick, I can't believe it. I was enjoying your, um, wasn't quite daily, but near daily updates yeah. of you with the cows. With the being cows. like, oh. I had so many different people like that I'd met on my travels before, like messaging me like, oh, is this a new hobby? Or, and, I was <laughs> like, and then someone else messaged me from like a Contiki I did last year. It was like, hey, I thought you said when you went to Australia, you was going to work with kids again. I'm like, this is for a visa. <laughs> I was like, I've not suddenly got a passion to work on farming i'm like it's it's for visa reasons they were like yeah but i suppose if like people have never heard about it it must be like what what do you mean you're working on a farm for a visa yeah i to be fair i would have somehow figured that everyone from these aren't necessarily just uk friends no these were like a a lot most of the time it was like one was american one was egyptian so i guess like it's not something like whereas not as so many Brits come to the UK yeah. and they're like, okay, we need to do our farm work. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. I've never met someone from the UK that didn't know about no, the farm work either. scenario. Yeah. Everyone's known. So I was like, oh, that's a bit weird. But yeah, the Americans and, well, Egyptians as well, I guess. Maybe it's just not such a... No, you wouldn't have heard of it, I guess. So oh, yeah, well. Everyone was very confused when my story like went from like me out in nightclubs in Melbourne to <laughs> walking around a farm and getting the cows in. So, you, you know... Why Why would uh, would Lindsay at a later life, maybe, you know, 20, 30 years down the track, would she open up her own hobby farm with a few cows or is this the last time I you'll actually, have seen cows? I actually really, lo- like, there was one cow in particular I really loved. <laughs> oh, that's I, cute. I really miss her. She was called Bambi. Um, so it was actually really interesting, like, compared to, because I knew, like, they had a really good reputation. That was the main reason I went. And then the second reason was because my granddad, when he lived in Texas, used to have his own farm and he used to milk cows as well. And I was like, well, I kind of want to see what my granddad did. With a family. (laughs) Yeah, it was like, I thought it'd just be interesting. Whereas I had friends that did the fruit picking and everything. They were like, oh, like we get messed around so much. We didn't get paid or like, oh, my back is breaking from packing all these boxes or I feel sick from being out picking cherries all day. And I was like, okay, like, let's try a dairy farm instead and see how it goes. Because it had so many, like, positive reviews from British and Irish. So where did you, how, how did you find it? And how did you know the reputation was I solid? saw it before I even came to Australia. I saw it on Australia Backpackers Facebook group. Okay. Uh, someone had put, like, hey, where's good to do my farm work, blah, blah. And, like, so many of the comments were, like, don't waste your time doing it anywhere else. Do it at Yarramundi, blah, blah, blah. And... And then it was like they tagged like the details. So then I messaged the woman who like sorts it all out and just asked her about it and then sorted it out from there. Cool. How many yeah. of you were on the farm? Uh, only like, I think it was like 10 or 12 of us. But I mean, it changes all the time because like say sure. once of, one, one of you's finished your 88 days, the next one comes in. Like usually they get someone in like a week before so that they can watch you that week and kind of learn how to do it so that you're not you're training the person as you're yeah, on the way out. Yeah, because it's not just, you know, it's it's so Walking much. Teach, yeah, it? it's so, <laughs> yeah. It was really interesting because I was like, you just you just never think about stuff like that when you're drinking yeah. milk. But like, yeah, it's, you like get the first cows in, and that milk goes for sale for production. Then you get like the pregnant cows in, or the cows that have just had babies actually, and you get their milk, but it's just for the calves. That milk can't go for sale, so you've got to make sure it doesn't go. In, in the wrong. Do you know what I mean, like, so it's all like the technical side of it as well, which I never would have. How thought. do you tell the difference, or is it just you? They're recorded? all in different fields, and they have so like when the cows had a baby, 
you spray on the back on their udders the day. <laughs> so like say if yesterday was Just spray paint. Yeah, it's there like but it's like a special one that doesn't okay. harm their skin. They buy it like and so like say if yesterday was the thirty first of August, you'd put free one. So then you'd be like, oh, okay, she carved yesterday, so we need to get her milk. Or like maybe we should do that with pregnant mums, just, like, <laughs> just on the belly. Just yeah, a little maybe. <laughs> yeah, and then there was like once all they once they were done, then you get the sick cows in. So like cows that are like having issues with their teats and stuff like that, and you have to like treat their teats with antibiotics. Like you put like a, a cream into the teats and everything. Same thing. Do you mm. how do you know? You can t- so basically. Is it like a, you can see like a bacteria sort of a redness? Cut, yeah, sometimes or like when you say before you put the cups on, you you do a check to see that the cow's like okay, and if you milk it and it it's vile, it comes out like like that, and it's like a big splodgy and it's like clumpy. Then uh, you know like that that uh, yeah that milk is not going to be and it will damage all the rest of the milk in the barrel if you get me because of, yeah yeah yeah. So then you're like right. So then you have to like put. Like, because there's, like, a computer system at the side the whole time as well. So as you're milking, like, you'll pull a chain and pause the machine from going and you'll, like, put in on the system, okay, that cow's got mastitis and that cow needs to go in a different field now. It can't go back into the normal field. So then... So it doesn't spread. So that, well, just so that that cow doesn't get milked. Because someone, you you might not have been on shift and you think, oh, yeah, that cow's fine. But I know, like, I checked it yesterday and it wasn't fine. So it needs to go in a different field now. Are you diagnosing the cow or someone... Not so basically the people that were a bit more experienced than me. Yeah, sure. At first. But then like after a while, like you could like if you pull the teeth and you see that, I'd be like, Oh, it's got mastitis and you like spray a circle on that just above that teat so okay. that you know like it's coming out of that one, not the other ones. Interesting that you only get the infection in the one Sometimes it's more than one. Okay. Yeah. It was it was very eye opening. Yeah. I never imagined so much Did you ever manual? Yeah, I tried, yeah, a few okay. times, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, for the most part, it was just the cups, which is really easy. It's not as, like, stressful as people would think. So you get, the cow comes in. So for me to get, like, a glass of milk, mm-hmm. uh, and by the way, did this turn you off milk? Like, are you a non-milk drinker anymore, or are you happy nah, to matter? Yeah, no, okay. I'm fine still. Okay. So to get the glass of milk on the table, the cows are coming in, you're putting the plugs on the cows, mm-hmm. making some recordings, checking to make sure the milk's all good. Mm-hmm. What else are you doing for the rest of your day? Um, you sleep and then you come back for the second shift, basically. Oh, so you're staying just like monitoring the cows? So No, so basically your first shift is at like, so before your shift even starts, the cows are all like sleeping and chilling out, obviously, and you need to wake them up and get them into the yard. Right. So that's at about like... 3 a.m. you're doing that so you're up at 2:32, so, whatever well, it is we wasn't too bad because we lived very near to the farm so okay. it was okay then once they're in the yard you close all the gates and then you go around and you turn all the machinery on and then you open the gate and start letting them on and the machine is like a big circle so they just step on one by one and the machine goes around and you just put the cup on put the cup on put the cup on like that and then it like it will come around to this end and it just goes back to its field so, so how long? So okay, so that's, interesting. that's in the morning. So like, right. say once all that's done, how many cows? It it so it's so long to explain. So like the okay. the <laughs> main the main herd could be anything from like six hundred to six hundred and thirty. That's the milk that goes for sale. Okay, so you get rid of them. Then you get the ones that have just had the baby. Get the milk for the calves. Get rid of them. Then you get the sick ones in treat all their sicknesses get rid of them then you wash all the machinery you wash the yard you turn everything off you go back and sleep until 3 p.m then you get the cows all in and do the whole thing again because they have to be milked twice a day right Mm. so you start at 3 a.m yeah you would then finish at what time before you're getting asleep so like our set hours were like 3 45 a.m until 9 30 a.m but you get paid overtime for going and pushing the cows in in the morning sure and then the trouble is so you think like so oh, you're quite literally pushing cows pretty much well, <laughs> but yeah and you um so you're meant to finish technically at 9 30 but you're never guaranteed like sometimes we'd finish like like a bit before or whatever and you're like yeah like getting ready and go back but then other times like you have a cow fall over and you're like oh because 
you'll get paid overtime, but sometimes you just don't even care about the overtime. You're like, yeah, I'm I just, just want to go to sleep. Yeah. And you'd be like, and you, you see the cow start wobbling and everyone going, oh, don't do it, don't do it. And then it goes and falls and you're like, oh, because it depends how bad the fall was. But basically, yeah, the cow will be like on the floor of the machinery. So you're, you're almost seeing this thing wobble. Yeah, sometimes it just loses its foot. It'll slip like oh, that or okay. whatever. And um, so then what you need to do is stop the whole machine. And like, if it's not too bad of a fall, reverse the machine to like the other side. And then someone will have to go and get in the buggy and bring this like hip device to put on the cow, on the cow's hips. Like a sling? It's like, can't explain it. It's like, I don't know, it goes over its hips and then it has a big piece of, like rope and you attach the rope to the buggy and then you have to like reverse the buggy and see if you can pull the cow off the machine and back into the yard because if it like oh because if if you let it go the whole circle round, it would hurt the cows you know it's going to bang when it gets to the other side yeah sure so yeah you've got to stop it so and then like one time like usually if it's not too bad you can just do it with the buggy but one time we had a cow lose its footing so much that it's front legs went over and its back back legs went over so it literally couldn't even put its hands to like not its hands obviously <laughs> <hooves>. <laughs> to put itself up at all because some of the time they're able to get like their front legs back up and just need like a little bit of help or whatever and um so because they're just standing on sort of like a small ish platform that's rotating yeah it's around. like just a platform like that it's just like yeah. all the way around and yeah one time it was so bad that we had to call the the guy that actually runs the farm be like look we can't reverse it round because it's gonna hurt the cow's arms and legs, obviously. And uh, so he had to actually get like a, a chainsaw thingy and saw the machinery uh. through <laughs> and then put the hip device on and then he had to pull it off with his tractor. Because you're really setting that for a second, the chainsaw through the cow. Is, yeah, not it, the cow. Okay. But yeah, the machine like, yeah, because it's got bars like that so that it can't fall off. But then the trouble is it can't fall off, but then it can't get up, yeah, if yeah. you get me. So, yeah, so that day. And then they had to get someone to come back and Re-weld weld and, yeah. the machinery after. So that day we was like, it's always like, we always said like to each other, like, don't say like, oh, we're doing good today. Like, oh, we're doing quick. Because as soon as you said that, a cow would fall over and you'd be like, oh, or like, or like the machine, <laughs> the machinery would stop working all of a sudden or like make a weird noise. And you'd be like, oh, that's not right. What's going on with the machinery? Like, Yeah. So, so as soon as the cow falls over, you, you're taking 20 minutes to sort it if out? If it's good, yeah. If it's good, like 20 minutes. Sometimes it took like up to 40 minutes to an hour to get the cow back up. And cause then, and then once you get it off, like obviously, like sometimes it, the cows fell because it's like, I don't know, a little bit sick or something like that. Or whatever. So then they have to give it like really strong version of like electrolytes, but for cows. Not, okay. not like our version of just like having a little... Baraka. Put, yeah, Baraka in the water. <laughs> yeah, so that, and you just got to like sit with the cow and make sure it's okay and calm it down and everything and, and then put it back in the field and like keep an eye on it for a minute and check it's okay. That kind sounds of quite nice, to be honest, you know, yeah. getting the cows back to health. So, so there's 12 of you working on this farm and most of roughly. you on, on this rotating machine all doing different things or are people like doing completely different tasks? So there was tasks? all different. So I was just kept on the dairy, so just okay. kept on milking. Um but other people, like some of the guys, were put on the tractors to put all the food, like the, the hay bales and all that out. Other people are put to go and like um, like mend things like broken gates and stuff like that. And then two girls usually are put on, well, it can be bo- boys as well, but so, some of the girls like doing it just because it's kind of cute kind of thing, like going to feed the calves because okay. the calves need to be sure. fed every day as well, obviously, so that they keep growing and then can produce yeah. their own milk going forward and then and get used to like once they're old enough they can come on the rotary to be milked but yeah so yeah some of you are on calves some of you are on the dairy some of you are on tractors like so yeah it was all dished out but yeah I was just kept in the dairy the whole time I thought I'd love the calves but I didn't oh really why not <laughs> they are not as cute as they seem why are they what grosser than they seem or more annoying? No, they're just yeah, they're annoying. That's the thing. They're, so I guess bec- so. This is coming from someone that looks after children, right? Yeah, yeah. So I was like the first day. I was like, someone was like, "Oh, do you want to come and do calves with me?" And I was like, oh, "I'd love to do calves with you." I was like so excited, and obviously, like they're actually really clever. Like they see the truck coming, 
like and we have this thing attached with all the milk inside at the back and it has like teats like a baby bottle kind of thing but yeah. so that they can all stand around it at once and they see it coming and everything and they run to it and they say and I was like oh it's so cute but then as soon as the milk runs out they start headbutting you Hey everyone, thanks for following along with the show. Hope you've been enjoying the Waitree podcast. Uh, this is a little bit of a shout out to our new app coming out soon, Waitree Experiences. It allows backpackers, solo travellers, locals to connect with someone else who's looking to go and do some sort of experience or go, you know, explore the area that they're in. We're in Perth at the moment, so a classic one might be wanting to go over to Rottnest for a bit of a day trip with the app. You'll be able to go on, like, experience of going over to Rotnest. You'll then be able to match with people that have liked similar experiences and who are nearby looking to go do something. And it should allow you to get out into the world, get exploring and uh, make some mates along the way. So again, that's at waytree.com forward slash experiences. Let's get back to the show. Like, like, get me more milk. Where's the milk kind of thing? And no like, shit. Yeah. And it was like, some of them actually had a really good head on them. Like, they look really... And I'd be like, ow. Like, and I'd be like, trying to get back in the um, the pickup truck. But the thing is as well, you've when you start leaving in the pickup truck, they start chasing you because they want more milk. milk right. So one of you has to stand next to the gate and try and get the pickup truck through and close the gate before all the calves run out. And sometimes, like, you'd miss one or two and you're like, then you're going to finish work even later because you're now chasing around two calves that won't get back into that field because they're confused. And you're like, oh my God, I just want to go to bed. Like, so after that, when people be like, do you want to do cars with me? I'd be like, no. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I just like want to milk the cows. The Milking the cows was way easier than calves. Like, I used okay. to look over and think, oh, calves looks really easy, actually. I wouldn't mind doing that. And then I did it and I was like... Does everyone get headbutt or were you just, you know, no, an attractant? No, a lot of people. Yeah, okay. a lot of people. And it's like... Actually, like, so the really little ones, they get, you put the milk over their fence and let them drink like that. And then the older ones, you drive with the pickup truck with the milk on the back because they're in a different field. Okay. But say the ones that are little where you have to put the thing over and then fill up the milk... Those things were so heavy to put over. I'm so, I realised like, I'm such a weakling. I didn't, <laughs> until I did that. And I was like, to the girl that usually did the calves, I was like, oh my gosh, like you've got some muscles to like do that every day. And yeah, just no, calves were so much harder than it looked. Uh, are you, have you since taken up, you know, bodybuilding in the, you know, in the gym at all? Just, uh, nah. Too busy. <laughs> I thought I'm not going to be going back to that, thankfully, as the, uh, the rules change for British, so I won't have to do farm work next year now. Yeah, congratulations. So, so yeah, I was like, that's not a problem I'm going to have now. So Has that come into a effect? Kind of, so... It's July 1st, I thought it was sort July, of July, one thing changed. July now, that's just gone, the age bracket's gone up to 35 instead of 30. So for anyone that hasn't heard about this, for, you, you know, you can sort of uh, give the heads up. I'm yeah. sure everyone has now, to be honest, yeah. but if you haven't... Yeah, so basically... Yeah, say even if you came to Australia years ago and you was here for a year but you didn't do your farm work and you didn't get your second year because of that, um, the rules have changed. Like, you can come back. Oh, hang on, I've gone to the wrong bit. Let's forget that for a minute. Um, (laughs) So now, say if you were 30 or whatever and you wanted to come back and do your second visa, you can come back because now the age limit's gone up to 35. So before it was like, after 30, that's it, like... Yeah, you can't get a second or a third visa. And then the other thing that's going to change in July next year is there'll be no more farm work at all. So yep. then that's what I meant to say before was if you'd have come here in 2019 and you didn't finish your farm work and you were like, oh, I can't come back for a second visa. Now you'll be allowed to come back for a second visa. Yeah. So. Do you, th- do you feel at all... Not well. Do you feel at all jaded or stitched up that you've now done farm work and now someone that's coming doesn't have to do that? Experience? I would have felt stitched up if I had to do the six months because in the second year mm. at the minute it's you have to do six months to get the third year. Three months was interesting. Like it was something I never ever would have done in my normal life. And sure. it, like I said to my family, it was really nice because I kept having dreams about my granddad. Like oh, that's I haven't, cool. I haven't okay. thought about it because he died a few years ago. So I was like, I haven't thought about him for years. And it was like, I think because I was milking the cows and on the farm, I was like, oh, I wonder what his life was like when he was in Texas. So it's quite nice to like, you feel close 
to that person again. So, and it was just like really interesting. And the people on my farm were great. Like I had really like funny and nice co-workers. Everyone was like, uh, like British or Irish. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. good, good crew as well. Sounds like the bosses, the farmers, whatever, were pretty good as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how did you feel? I think you sort of mentioned that it was, all you wanted at times was sleep, but to have a two shifter, mm-hmm. so you're so you're finishing at ten ish, and then you're trying to sleep mm. to then wake up again at three p.m. to then finish probably what like ten p.m. Oh no no no! The evening shift was good. The evening shift finished at seven because okay. you only did the main herd in the evening. In the morning, you do all the herds, all the different herds. In the evening, you just milk the main herd one more time. So I actually. Afternoon shift was great. It was just like a breeze. Okay. Super quick. Yeah. So you finish at seven mm. and then are you going like straight to bed? Is everyone staying up? We'd usually go back and have our dinner and just maybe like watch a little bit of TV and then go to bed by like nine at the latest. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you're getting five and a bit, maybe six hours yeah. sleep, getting up. And then are you actually managing to sleep from 10 till 3 or are you sort of like napping for a bit and then, you know, getting lunch and then uh, chilling out? No, I was flat out. Like I, it took, like at first it was a bit weird for me to get my head around. But then, yeah, because you, I don't know, you just get in the swing of it. I, I yeah. wouldn't get up until about 30 minutes before we needed to leave. Oh, wow. Like I would sleep. So you'd hit the pillow, mm. be bang out. I'd well. sleep better in the day I found than the night and like the oh. the. The husband and wife that ran the farm, they said like a lot of people seem to find that they sleep better in the day sleep than the night. But then the trouble is you wake up from the day sleep and you're like, think like you're confused. You think it's the end of the day, but, you but you've got to go the back. Day, the yeah, or the, yeah, the yeah. start of the day. <laughs> yeah. Or you, yeah, think it's, you think it's your day off and you're like, oh, it's not my day off. That's tomorrow. You're like, I've got to go back and milk for another session. Yeah. But they were really good on that farm. Like they'd give you, so say if you worked four days in a row, you get three days in a row off. And then if you work three days in a row, you get two days in a row off. They did like a good system like that. So you're still... And when you say off, you mean fully off or fully just like off. one shift off? Fully oh, off. Okay. Because in the in the days that they make you work, they make sure you hit your 38 hours. But so then, so basically I wasn't working every day, but I was hitting those 38 yeah. hours in the days yeah, that I was working. Yeah. Whereas all my friends that did the fruit pick and they were like, oh my gosh, they slave drived us. Like we had to work all the time. And if we missed anything, then they wouldn't sign off. Like we wouldn't get it towards, or say if they got rained off because it's like all tropical storms up in like Bundaberg or whatever, or if it was too hot and they're not allowed. So they're like, it, it doesn't pop. But then they're like, oh, like if you wanted to complete your 88 days really quick, it's a nightmare. Whereas with the dairy, the cows have to be milked Every day, like even Christmas yeah, regardless, Day. Regardless, yeah, doesn't regardless, matter what the weather like, is, yeah. So at least I literally, I got there on like, I think it was the 9th of January. And then I left on the 7th of April, I remember. Smashed it. Yeah, I was like, just blitzed it and was like, I'm done. I'm free for the rest of the year now. Yeah, like you can't help but probably feel a little bit like, fucking, I'm so good. I nailed that. Like, yeah. I found the good one. I knew what I was doing. Yeah, yeah. I was really, and like my uncle before I left, he was like, you know, I've been sp- like speaking to a few people like dairy farms really hard from what I've heard. Like, are you sure you want to do this? And I was like, even if it's harder than the fruit picking or whatever, I was like, I just want to smash it out in 88 days because I've got friends that did the fruit picking and, and because of all those interruptions and things, they're like, oh, it's been six months That's and I'm yeah. still here. I'm, I was like, I don't want to get stuck somewhere for six months. Yeah. So. Did you, because during that time, and I think when we spoke in December, we sort of, at that time it was, coming out that it, you know the, the visa and stuff yeah was we probably kept waiting be. so uh, you know yeah i had friends that risked not doing it because they were like it's coming it's coming it's coming i've had some friends it was fortunate they ended up going on a 408 covid visa and being out like so now when their working holiday visa expires this year they can still stay in australia because they went on like an imp- employer yeah, kind of visa, visa. But then oh I, the 408 the bridging visa or 408 is like now it's like a COVID visa. It's, yeah. yeah. So it's like, but you, you're meant to like, say if you gave me a job, I'm meant to stay with you now, but a lot of people get the job and just go, because they've got the visa. Um, but then I've got other friends that were like, I'm just going to keep waiting. And you know, it's, it's due to come soon. And then they're like, Oh no, my visa's expired. Like 
just because they were thinking it because they kept saying at first they were like it's going to change in March yeah. it's going to change in and it didn't change like the announcement didn't come until the end of July was it or the beginning of July I can't remember I think beginning of July actually yeah yeah, yeah. Yes, so, yeah. and I was like because I had to go back for my best friend's Hindu and wedding I was like I can't risk not doing it because I want to make sure that it's done before her hen do and wedding so that when I come back to Australia, I'm not like, oh, I need to do my farm work, I need to do my farm work. So, yeah, so I'm glad I smashed it out in one go rather than... I'm surprised actually when you leave, there isn't like a pause button. Mm. Or like, uh, you know, I've left the country. You, yeah, it's you, really annoying. You kind of would have thought, you know, it's, everyone has to check in and out anyway. Mm. It's not like you leave and they have no idea that you've left. No. Your passport gets logged. The visa like account would have to get flagged. Yeah. Like, oh, this person's now left, or this person's just. I ended. wish they did that. I mean, it's fine. Like, I was really glad to go home for her wedding and everything yeah. like that. But I did lose the whole of June because of that. But it's okay. Like, so you do the you're doing the farm work. You've done the three months. You mm-hmm. get you get paid pretty okay. Yeah, the salary was good. I was like, it's more than I made as a nursery teacher in the UK. I was like, what a joke. You could say not more than Dubai, though. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't that good. Okay. But it was better than what I made in the UK. I was like, how am I getting paid more to be a farmhand than being an educator? <laughs> I was like, what is going on with the UK? Well, people love milk. True. You know, It's not got old yet, so. Yeah. So, um, so you do, do the farm work, three months. Now, the crew of people that you had there... Have you since been catching up with them after as well? Yes, um, yeah, we've all got each other on socials and everything. But um, Nicole was my roommate. She was really lovely. Yeah, she she was in Melbourne when I was in Melbourne. When I, I finished the farm work and I went to Melbourne for like two weeks. And she went to Melbourne just for one weekend to see her friend that was there. And then she had to go back to the farm to carry on her farm work. So we met up. But she's in, based in Sydney now. So we'd like to see each other again. And then... Uh, I was always put on shift with Greg. He was so funny. He was from Scotland. So Shout out to you, Greg, as well. Yeah, Greg was great. <laughs> he was a really good laugh. So I think you said this as well. I think it was you last time when mm-hmm. you Sundays. you found that the Scottish were of the most humour. Like they were the funniest. I just love their humour. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's just, yeah. Something yeah, about they're it. just great. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so for anyone that's interested, you know, if you are from the UK... You don't really need to think too much about doing them for the farm work. But for anyone else, mm-hmm. um, this particular farm, I think you might have mentioned the name, but how would I find it? How would I, you know, try and reach out to um, to do something similar to what you've done? On Facebook, really, I'd say. that's. I think that's where they seem to get the most contact from people. And but, why, why do you think? Because I would have figured that, you know, on Facebook, if someone with a big reputation, they only hire 12 people and mm. it's rotating. But uh, did you do anything in particular to make you stand out when you message the person? No, but uh, the wife who helps to run everything, she did say to us, she was like, she does a little Facebook stalk. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and she's like, are they weird? Like, are they <laughs> <laughs> And just from like how you message as well, like just gets the sort of vibe, like are they, yeah. like she'll explain like, you know, it is hard work. You are going to be working these hours. You are going, and she said sometimes like after she's explained that, she'll get no response. And she was like, okay, so I'm not going to message that person again. And then, but like, if people are like, that's fine, I'm up for it. But she's like, okay. Or especially if people are like, oh, I've worked on dairy farms before, blah, blah, then obviously she's keen. So yeah. kind of just depends on how you message. And also if you look like a weirdo for your profile <laughs> or not. So I'm glad she didn't yeah. think I was a weirdo. So try not to look like a weirdo on Facebook. Mm, and like uh, the classic thing of like not having a profile picture being a bit yeah. like well how do I know who you are and like no details about yourself or where you're from it's obviously for them they're just like it's a bit of a red flag why don't you want yeah. to tell me about yourself a little bit too much of a risk to be fair yeah yeah as someone that's you know uh, been around a lot of Facebook groups and run a few as well you can always can guarantee that yeah, yeah. That anyone that doesn't have a profile picture is you'd say 99.9% of yeah. the time not someone it's a red flag yeah, yeah. very much so um, so okay, you get you get you get picked by these people. Clearly, you managed to charm them with your mm-hmm. Facebook posts. Maybe that she saw and she's like, "Oh, she's sh- sharing with yeah. the family. This is very nice." Yeah. So, uh, do you think now that UK no farm work required? You know this this farm business themselves. Like, are they were they worried at all about it when you spoke with them or because Irish still have to do it? 
Oh, the Irish do. Mm-hmm. So Northern thought- Ireland doesn't. Because Northern Ireland are a part of the UK. Right, but right, yeah, right. But so you think how many Irish are in Australia? So the Irish still have. So for them, like, because when, when it was coming to the rumours at the time, and I said to mum, I was like, oh, like, if it comes out, we don't have to do it. I might, like, quit, but give them some notice. But mum was like, don't do that. It really puts them out. Blah. And I said, mum, she is getting messages every, like, every time we, like, meet up for dinner or drink something like that she's like oh i've got seven messages today like she constantly constantly get i said she's not going to be put out if i leave yeah, and especially yeah. like because the irish still have to do it and and they love the irish because they like really just get stuck into it and they've got a good sense of humor and everything so was she, there much training from the farmers ends or it was like really you were saying before you shadow the person that's sort of leaving and, and yeah it was more was, shadowing really and then like yeah. they would come down if you needed a bit of extra help or questions or anything but yeah it's mainly like you're watching everyone else for a bit and then you just kind of yeah copy them and once they think you're okay to be left on your own you get left on your own kind of thing because there's a legitimate concern that the bunch of farmers are thinking oh are we stuffed now as a result of Mm. losing a great workforce and at the same time the funny thing that you're saying before hey you know your friends are going and they get stuffed around through Mm -hmm. fruit picking and just before everyone was coming back in, you know, during COVID times, everyone was crying out, needing people. Yeah, desperate, desperate for people. The reverse happened very quickly, partly because the number of Pacific Islanders in the country taking up work exploded from, I think it was about 6,000 back in like mm-hmm. 2018, 2019, yeah. up to 45,000 um, towards the middle of this year at least, mm-hmm. which means, and only about 40,000 backpackers typically each year would normally go and do farm work Mm -hmm. so you've had an extra like almost forty thousand people come in to take up a lot of the farm jobs Mm -hmm. so now we just saw all the backpackers that could instantly get a job if they wanted all of a sudden going where is all the work Mm -hmm. where is all this farm work going on and consequently so the employers then all of a sudden had such a huge number of people again that they could like you know we don't have to yeah. treat maybe as well as we need to or pay as well as we could or, mm-hmm. you know, you, you know, people are expendable again. So it's this constant back and forth yeah. that's going on. And now that, you know, the UK is largely out of it, it's going to be a bit weird. It's, it's going to be, be different. To see what happens. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, yeah, because before when I was telling my uncle about the room is changing and he was like, there's no way those rules are going to change. Like the farmers would all be absolutely stuffed. And I was like, no, I said, like every other nationality has to do it except for us. And he was like, oh, OK. He was like, because <laughs> yeah. he thought it meant like no one yeah, has to do it. And yeah. I was like, no, 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 no. Like everyone else still has to do it. But yeah, yeah it's a good deal. So I'll, I'll take that deal. I mean, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I don't think Australians have to go over and do farm work in no. the UK. No, so. you don't. You don't. Like a lot of people say, like, how come that's not a rule in the UK for you guys? Uh, it is strange. I would have thought yeah. it would have been a quid pro quo mm. style. And because isn't UK needing like short yeah, as well? Yeah. And I think as well, you guys, when you get the UK working holiday visa, I think you just get like two years straight off the bat. Whereas we've got to keep reapplying each year. So Yeah, we do. Yeah. I was like I was pretty sure <laughs> that was the situation. Yeah, I actually don't know. I have to check that, but I'm um, just gonna I'm yeah. just gonna confidently say yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So. Okay. No, I'm glad I did free. It was really interesting, and like I like the people I met. Like it was people I never would have crossed paths with in normal life. Like because like Nicole, who was my roommate, who I got on with really well, she wasn't doing like the hostels or backpacking or anything. She was just like living and working in Sydney with friends and like now her boyfriend's in Sydney. So she's living with him. But So like we probably never would have met if it wasn't for that farm work job. And like we had a really good time together. Did you pretty much have like a three month detox as a result? As pretty well much. Like we, we barely drank. Like yeah. we drink sometimes. Like it was nice because Nicole wasn't there at first when I first started. She came when it was about like maybe – halfway through my second month I would say something like that and then so then it was kind of nice when she came because they would match me and her up to have the same days off so what we used to do on our days off was sit and watch every like the most like so many episodes of Desperate Housewives <laughs> and just, I'd, nice. just, I'd sit there and just drink red wine like that and she'd like have a couple of um, cruises uh, whatever so that was all, okay, but, but it yeah. wasn't like going out and getting super drunk or like even in the house, we wasn't getting really... I was just having red wine and some cheese whilst we was watching Desperate Housewives. It wasn't A nice quiet crazy. night in. Yeah. 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 Also, so. does that mean, you know, you finish the three months, 
And then, bang, are you feeling like free woman, just ready to go out there and just yeah. like party or take it on? Like what, you know? Wh- it was, was weird. Next? I said like, because I never went to uni or anything like that, I was saying to you before, I was like, I kind of felt like I'd like done something bad and been sent to boarding school for three months <laughs> in a way. Like it just felt like I've never gone somewhere like not out of my own choice. Like I've got away to places for long, like I did the cruise ship for six months, but that was like of my own choice. Sure. And I re- and you're moving, you're not in just the same yeah, place. Yeah, I was time. like, it was really, I was like, I was sat on the train from Melbourne to this farm and I was like, where am I going? I was like, I'm literally going to somewhere I don't know for three months and like no one I know and I don't have a car. Like, this is so bizarre that I'm doing this to myself, but I'm doing it for a visa. Yeah. <laughs> like, actually, yeah. just and just before you continue on, what were you actually guys doing? Did you actually have time off? Like, so you'd have a few days here and there. Mm-hmm. Like, you're quite rural, I imagine. But are you guys doing little car trips if you don't have a car? Very, or what are you doing? Very lucky. Like, me and Nicole didn't have a car, but um, pretty much everyone else on the farm did. So, say if like you had the same day off as me and Nicole, sometimes people would be like, hey, do you want to just go into town and get breakfast? Or other times they'd be like, oh, there's a waterfall like two hours away. Do you want to go to a waterfall? Like, <laughs> And like sometimes we go out and do things, but then after a while yeah. I was like, yeah. I just want to watch Desperate Housewives. <laughs> With some cheese and some yeah. wine. Yeah, once, once yeah. Nicole was there, <laughs> Nicole was like really chilled as well on her days off and I was like, okay. It was like Desperate Housewives. Like, it was nice. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So anyway, you've, you've left the prison feeling mm. experience yeah just want to say they were really nice i wouldn't sure. yeah sure. because she was an actual prison. yeah sometimes like she get she would have people say comments like that or whatever um the woman who runs it but they, they were a really nice family and like the fact that they would give us days off whereas like the fruit picking ones mess us around and everything so just to put it out there it yeah. was nice but it sounds like of all the choices you could have made this is a fantastic place yeah. to do the 88 mm-hmm. days yeah but no yeah when i when i did leave i did i felt like I don't know, I felt like a teenager. I was like, I'm going out in Melbourne tonight. <laughs> I don't think I know, really. Yeah, I don't think I've been so excited to go out since I was like 18. Like, you know, when you turn 18, you're like, do you want to ID yeah. me? Like yeah. when you've got your yeah. ID like that. I was like, <laughs> and I was like meeting up with two of my Scottish friends that I met back in Fraser Island months before because they are living yeah. and working in Melbourne now. So I was like, I'm going out with my Scottish friends tonight. And yeah, it was really lovely. I feel like that's the uh, I can I can almost feel that experience. It's it's it. Yeah. Uh, it seems like the you know you're leaving an exam after like a long mm. semester or I don't know. It's just something we just there's some like real buzz about you that you're yeah. like yeah. Oh. Especially like coming from the farm to Melbourne because there was like a direct train as well, and it's like everything's just like trees, hills, trees, hills, and I was like. Oh, oh, a skyscraper, like, as you're getting closer in, I was like, the city, like, I was so excited, like, I was walking around with my AirPods in, I was like, I feel like I'm in a film right now, it feels like a film scene, like, yeah. someone walking through London, or whatever. Did you have a nice, you know, song playing, just to sort of, like, really I paint? I had some good songs playing, yeah. and I went, the first thing I did when I got off the train was went and got a McDonald's McMuffin, nice. and hash brown and coffee, that's the thing I missed the most, was having like a full English and McDonald's breakfast. That's my two favourite meals I like to it. have. I always found that after, you know, like a lengthy experience, there was always like a a theme or a recurrent song that like really coloured that mm-hmm. period of time. So that was always the, as I'm getting that real feeling and that buzz, mm-hmm. I would then go, okay, now I get to enjoy that song that like, yeah. as like a wrap around of that experience. Mm-hmm. The best one I think I had was the Jamie XX song uh seesaw after finishing physio degree oh yeah and it was like i'd use that song specifically to just loop on repeat Mm -hmm. and i would do that for days and weeks on end i wouldn't listen to anything else yeah somehow managed to keep me like into it the whole way yeah so then to like reintroduce that with the freedom of it Mm -hmm. was like a great experience but i love the you you have one thing that you're like like when i get back to x Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go do this, and yeah. that like brief moment is so satisfying. Yeah, so it was the, a good feeling. Yeah. yeah. So a little McMuffin. You go out that night. Do you just like rip the lid for a week? Uh, yeah. Kind of, I wasn't actually too crazy that okay. night. I did, um, but then I wanted to do like touristy things that I didn't get the time to do when I was in Melbourne last time because when I was in Melbourne in November, it's classic Melbourne weather. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I was so then I was there. Yeah, sort of mid April. It was great weather. It was so lovely. I got to like, I went to the botanical gardens and it was like 
so sunny like I was like went with jumper and jeans on or whatever at first and I was like took my jumper off I was just walking around in my little top and sat there and Thanks for following along Waitree Experiences. I uh, really appreciate it. Hopefully you found it helpful so far. We plan to have many more conversations with backpackers who have travelled around Australia to find out what they're doing, how they're doing it, so that you can be better informed, get the most out of your trip. So if you like what we're doing here, give this show a five-star rating if you feel so inclined or a thumbs up. And we really appreciate uh, anything that shares it around. As as you know, that's how things uh, grow, of course. So that's all I'll ask. Give us a little bit of a shout out and I'll really appreciate it. Cheers, guys. Read a nice book. I had a coffee by the pond. Like, so nice. And yeah, just I did quite a few. I went to see a play. I did a few things that week. Just like nice touristy things that I didn't get the time to do. So All solo? Uh, no, some, some with friends sure. and things like that. So... Yeah, just things I didn't really get the time to do when the weather was rubbish and then like now time was no limit and everything like that. Did so. you give yourself a like a hotel luxury or was it you were straight I, into a hostel? I did. Okay. I, did. <laughs> I was like, I, like, I loved Melbourne when I went in November. I stayed in um, base in St Kilda and it's yeah, so sure. like party and fun and everything. Because I was in the mood still like to be social and going out every night and joining in on the events and things. But like when you've just been in the middle of nowhere on a farm for three months, working at crazy times. I was like, I need some space. Yeah. I was like, I'll meet up with people when I want to, but I was, I just like, I cannot be sharing a room with 12 strangers right now. Yeah. So I had a, my favorite thing. I had two stays. I had um, about five days in North Melbourne in this great Airbnb. And it wasn't even expensive because the guy who owns it's there, but what he does is like when you come in the hallway, the bedroom's there and the bathroom's there, and then he just puts a separator in the hallway so that he has his own space and you have your own space. Oh. Yeah. So I would see him every now and then, but it just felt like I had my own place for five days. And it's like right next to the Queen Vic market. So I was like going to the Queen Vic market every day. Were you so talking like a separate, like just like a curtain? Separator? Do you know like the old fashioned things that women used to get changed behind? Yeah. In the it was like a like quite arty, like artistic okay. one like that. He had a lot of art in the flat as well. So it was just like that. And he was just like, I'm just over here if you ever need anything, but like, you know, this is your half and this is your space and but if you need me just shout me or text me or so it was great he was a really nice bloke yeah smart as well it's an easy way to make a little well, bit yeah, of you cash know, he's paying off his rent every month from it so yeah fair play to him and it was a great location all the trams are nearby the queen vic markets there like loads of nice restaurants i don't think i could get away with that here mm. no i can't yeah. split this place <laughs> so yeah that was really nice and then uh, but then he was fully booked for the rest of the month. Oh, you would so have continued with him if you I could have? I would have. Yeah, okay. I've, like, saved that in my Airbnb folder for when I ever go back. But then, yeah, so the rest of the time I had to stay at a hostel in St Kilda. I got a private room. But, yeah, it was not It was not a nice room. Okay. <laughs> it was nothing special. And, yeah, I was like, I want to go back. And, like, so I love St Kilda, but St Kilda's so far from everything else. So, like, if you want to meet up with mates in, like, the CBD of Melbourne and that it's like forty minutes on the tram. So for yeah, for again anyone uh, playing along at home. Mm. So in Melbourne, where do you sort of you know looking back recommend try and you know locate yourself? I Definitely guess? both. Like you should do St Kilda and you should do the CBD. Sure. But yeah, like now that I've done it a few times, I like the CBD the best. I would say just so, because more activity. Yeah, I just think. I don't know, it's hard to explain. It depends on your personality, I think, as well. Yeah. But just, but I do like St Kilda. Like, like the first time I went when I was in the mood to party and everything, because St Kilda's down the road from Chapel Street and that's like where loads of really good like bar crawls are and everything. So I love that. But I have like a lot of friends in the kind of CBD and like Fitzroy, Richmond, blah. So it's easier to be in the CBD if you want to meet up with people. Just for me, like who's there for me at the minute. Yeah, sure. So... Then it was annoying, like when I wanted to make plans with people, and I was having to get the tram all the way from St Kilda up. How long does it take to get from St? Kilda? Yeah, like forty minutes, like thirty-five yeah. to forty minutes on the tram. So, so it is a bit annoying. But like, I do really like St Kilda. But I think I don't know. I just like the CBD more and like South Bank because you've got the river and they've got bars on the river, and I just I like the city life. And yeah. so far, so you know, you come out, 
you have like a decent time, get a little bit of space to yourself mm-hmm. in Melbourne. And now you're starting to, have you already orchestrated what you're doing? Because you've always been a planner. Mm-hmm. So do you already know what's coming ahead of you over the next three months or six yeah, months? Yeah, like when I was on the farm, I'd be like in between breaks booking things and all my coworkers would be like, what are you booking now? And I'm like, oh, just like <sighs> this and oh, my flight for July. And they're like, your flight for July? And I'm like, yeah, like I, everything was booked up until like today, actually, t- uh, tomorrow, tomorrow when I fly back to Sydney. That's like, I booked... For anyone that doesn't know as well, Mm -hmm. you've arrived into Perth when? Like two hours ago. And and (laughs) you you leave when? (laughs) When Well, tomorrow morning. Yeah, Yeah. so (laughs) tight schedules, still moving around all Mm -hmm. the place. But But thanks for coming down. Yeah. (laughs) But yeah, tomorrow, so I booked everything back in February. So that flight back to Sydney tomorrow is like the last thing that I booked whilst I was still on the farm. So of course, you've already, again, got things planned for... Now, yeah, yes. Which but that was to, all, yeah. like, February to the... What are we in now? Like, nearly the end of August. August February to nearly yeah. the end of August was all booked back when I was on the farm. Like, So where are you... Because you were saying before, uh, last time we spoke, that you mm-hmm. follow some bloggers that you really like mm-hmm. and then through them sort of go Make and book plans. things. Are there any other places now that you've been going to that you found really good to find activities that you like doing or experiences or tours? Um, I mean, oh, so what I've just finished, that bus tour, uh, it's called Road to Adventure. Uh, I've done three times now with them. So I would like, I would have really struggled to have done the West Coast without them because obviously on the East Coast, you have the Greyhound bus and you just get a pass, you book on and off whenever you want. Super easy to organise. Victoria, super easy to get around, just get the tram everywhere, get the train everywhere. But West Coast, it's just not like that. Obviously, there's not Greyhound on that side and everything. So Road to Adventure is great because they have like four different routes. They have Adelaide to Perth and then vice versa. Perth to Esperance, but it, it loops back. Then they've got Perth to Broome and then they've got Broome to Darwin. So now I've done, yeah, Perth to Esperance, Perth to Broome, and Broome to Darwin. Different bus driver or operator each time? Mm-hmm. Same Has person? been, yeah. Okay. Sometimes it's the same ones, um, but it just happens that each time I've booked, it's been like a turnover of stuff. Like the the guy that I had when I did Broome to Darwin, really nice guy, but he's decided like he wants to go back to uni and like get a different like further his degree, whatever. So he's having a break at the moment and then he's apparently coming back. So this time I had a completely different driver to what I had in May recently. And he was great as well, this guy. So did you, so again, you're in uh, Melbourne for a little while Mm -hmm. and then what was the move? So you were like, all right, we'll enjoy CBD. And, Mm -hmm. you know, are you you falling in love with Melbourne at this point? Yeah, I already really loved it when I was there in November. And I was like, you know, I kept saying to people, I think I'm going to move to Melbourne in the new year. And I was like, oh, just like, you know, was it a fluke? Was it I just had a really good time? Like, blah. And then so when I went in April after the farm work as well, I was there for like two weeks. And I was like, no, I love Melbourne because I've done Sydney even more than Melbourne as well. But I just I love Melbourne more than Sydney. Well, I think it won or it was close. To, it was in the top three. It might have been top one again. Most mm. livable city in the world. I seen, score again. Yeah, I've seen that recently. So yeah. look, you've picked you picked well, mm-hmm. according to whoever votes on whoever. whoever yeah, I never know that. where they know collate they, those yeah. statistics from. Who knows? Maybe whoever pays the most. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but nonetheless, so okay, you're in Melbourne. You're loving mm-hmm. it. Stay there for a couple of weeks, and then what's the? Uh, then the next thing was the Broom to Darwin tour because I'd already booked that, that when one. I was on the farm, so I knew I, I knew I had like two weeks in Melbourne to chill and get back on a normal sleeping pattern after the farm work did, how long did it take it did take a little like it's like a week so they're not awful but yeah it was and it was so weird the first day waking up and I was like where am I like because <laughs> the Airbnb like the guy he was very like artsy I don't know what he really did as a career or anything but like the room was like really lovely paintings and like lots of gold and sort of I don't know he was just very artsy like so it was like completely different to my room on the farm and I was like 
oh, I don't work on the farm oh. anymore. Yeah. And I was like, I'm in Melbourne. Like, but yeah, that first day waking up, I was like, oh, you know, you feel like I've missed my alarm. Like yeah. I'm going to be, everyone else is going to be waiting for me at the dairy. And then you're like, no, I'm not. I'm in Melbourne. Yeah. I was like, Again, great feeling. Oh, it was so good. So good not set an alarm. Yeah. That day, yeah, I was like, I'm going to bed without an alarm. It was great. Yeah, so. So you recover from that and then mm. you just fly straight over to Perth and Perth to Broome? Uh, no, I went back to my uncle's in Sydney for a few days because okay. I wanted to do washing, unpacking, repacking, catch up with my family and then I went up to Broome. And is there anything else in you know Melbourne during that two weeks that mm-hmm. you were like, oh, has to have to go there, you know, yeah, things there, that must be done. Yeah, it was because the weather was nice at, at that point. Whereas when I went in November, the weather wasn't good, so I got to do things like I went to, oh, I can't remember the name now. It's a bar on on the river. Oh my gosh, it's gone out of my brain. It's a really nice bar though. It might okay. come to me in a minute. Um, if you think about later on as well, I can always add it into Arbery. The I think it's called Arbery. Arbery Afloat Bar, that's what it was called. I'd always seen it all the time on Instagram. It like just kept popping up on my like suggested things to do and stuff like that. So, so if I'm there. over there, why should I go there? What's the it's draw just, card? I like like I just enjoy things like that. It's like it was it's like right on literally on the river and so like and then you've got the bridge there and like so when the sun sets it's really pretty and you just have a nice wine and I was catching up with a friend that I hadn't seen for a while so it was just like because I'd just been on a farm yeah. and like <laughs> no makeup not doing my hair just wearing my high-vis top every day and I was like I want to wear makeup and I want to wear nice clothes again so it was nice to just dress up and be a bit sophisticated and go yeah. out for a uh, wine and yeah. watch the sunset and yeah, that was a, that was a good feeling that day. Actually, it was like oh, I'm in civilization again. And then um, again, just before you shoot to Sydney, are you doing? Uh, is it a lo- mostly you're sort of staying in the CBD, sort of like chill time, hanging out with friends, going out? When I'm or, in Melbourne, yeah. Or yeah. were you actually going like, oh, again, here's activities, here's places to go see and check out? It's more or like really low down bars and restaurants for me yeah, that time yeah. because. Yeah, and because I had more friends in Melbourne at that point than when when I went in November, I actually didn't know anyone in Melbourne. I like had no friends that were there, but I'd stayed in the hostel and had a really fun time anyway. Um, so then by this point, when I was there in April, I had various friends that were actually living there now that I could meet up with, and so friends just, from hostel people, with tours and experiences, friends from people tours, and one friend from home. Um, so yeah, just nice to like nice, yeah. tick a few like must do bars off my list and. Yeah. Oh, and I went to see my favourite rapper in Melbourne. That was a great experience. Okay. Who is your favourite rapper? You won't know him. Okay. It's called Example. He's from the UK. I feel like... uh, You might know one or two of the songs. Person. Did they do a show in Perth? They've done loads. Yeah. They did a few shows. I think my friend, the videographer that was speaking about beforehand, Mm -hmm. did did a show. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I think so. The Uh, name rings a bell. Yeah. He's really good. Like, he's been my favourite since I was, like, 12. Okay. And, um... But it was so great seeing him in Melbourne. So this was this was the day before I went to start my farm work. I like made sure to fit in. So this was January, like January the fifth or something. It's an impressive event to fit in just before going just out. Before. I'd it. even said to like the woman who runs the farm, I was like, "Can I start on the Monday because my favorite rapper is going to be in Melbourne and I really, really, really want to see him." And she was like, <laughs> "Okay," um, because it would. I knew it'd be unlike any other time I saw him because I always see him like in the O2 Arena back home, which is too big massive and i'm sure. at the back like in the cheap seats like 70 pounds like and i'm basically just watching him on the screen and i'm like dancing but i'm still having a good time and whatever but this time it was in a laundry bar in melbourne and only 200 people came and because we got there early we were at the front and so he was right like where you are and he even put the microphone to me at one point and let me join in and i was like I was texting my dad. I was like, "Example just gave me the microphone." Oh, that was a so very. I'm good guessing moment. you know the words. Oh yeah, I did. Thank God. I was like, uh, because I'd like made a solid effort as well to listen to the new album, like for like a good month or two before. And I was like, because imagine if he does, and it's one of the new <laughs> ones, and I don't. He's. It would be like you're not a true fan. <laughs> <laughs> and I wanted to be like, but I've been listening to you since I was 12. Like, There's so, no recovery from that. If uh, you get handed the mic and then you don't, like, can't push uh, out the lyrics after, that's, like, the moment that you were hoping for and 
forever gone. I'd have been it. so And sad. you can't explain that to him at the time. So he's going to pull away and be like, yeah, disappointing. I can't shout over the music and be like, I know all your other songs. Yeah. Give I, me another chance. Yeah, do an old one. Do a 2006 <laughs> one. Like, no. So that was a really good moment. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, all right. You shoot off over to um, Sydney at this mm-hmm. point and then already again, you're getting ready for the journey that's about to come. Broom to Darwin. For Broom. Yeah. Do you fly directly to Broom? You can't. Well, you can, but you need a million lot of money. dollars. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's ridiculous if you want to fly direct. So, I, yeah, I just did um, connected in Perth and then Perth to Broom all in one day. So it took like nine hours. <laughs> It's a little bit of transit. I was like, I can't believe I'm still in the same country. Unfortunately, it's still not cheap either to oh. go from Perth to Broome. Mm-mm. So somehow, well, I know why. Because of all the mines up north. Uh, and, te- you know, we also don't have a lot of people constantly booking up there. So no, the demand's no. not super high. It yeah. is some periods. Broome gets very busy. Yeah, when it's um, like the summer sort of. Yeah, like when it's winter, winter here. Sorry, and, yeah. Yeah, exactly. It feels like summer for me, but it's your winter. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, it does get cold here. Yeah, no, I know, it I gets, know. It gets yeah, for, cold. Yeah, when I was here three weeks ago, I do agree it was cold in Perth. Okay, good. Um, no, but so yeah, the the, Perth, the the flight up to Broome gets pretty expensive. So one, you got all the mining companies where you've got the FIFO boys, mm. which now I do a little bit of. Yeah. Um, so everyone in the hive is basically they don't pay for the flights. So mm. all the big mining companies, Rio Tinto, BHP, they mm-hmm. just get billed. Ah. Oh, so the okay. airlines can just charge almost whatever they like. Ah, okay. See, I didn't realise It's a great deal Mm -hmm. for them. And the flights are always booked and they have a regular occurrence. But for anyone else trying to do it, they don't want to give up the number of planes. And somehow to fly within our own state can be more expensive than to fly across the country. Yeah, I think I was thinking like I'm sure it's cheaper to like go to Bali. Like sometimes. it is. The flight to Bali is almost always going to be cheaper than the flight just to Broome. Yeah, it's crazy. It's wild, but. Yeah. yeah. No, but yeah, I'm like, I'm lucky. Obviously, I've got family in Perth who I'm seeing tonight. So this time, rather than doing the whole smashing it out nine hour with the connection, this time going for dinner with my family tonight and then tomorrow I fly to Sydney. A little bit of recovery, a little bit of respite. Nice to see the family as well. Nice to see the fam, yeah. yeah. So you, you go over and do the broom, the road to adventure, mm-hmm. um, and this was was this just before the hens, after the yeah, hens? just before the hen. So that's why it was great as well because uh, I like waited to put some photos up when I was back in the UK so that my best friend would think, Still think really. Yes, yeah, yeah, so I put on my story of like a sunset in Darwin, really, and she was like, "Oh, it's so pretty." But, but, it, but to she, anyone that uh, wasn't aware as well. Mm-hmm. You went over to surprise your friend for a hen's yeah, party. Yeah, my childhood best friend. Yeah. Um, and I think we were speaking about it. Well, we were just yeah. speaking about it a little bit beforehand. Mm-hmm. But the, the, this was going on for like two years. Yeah, yeah. This, yeah. This Even when I lived in Dubai, I said to her like, no, I can only make the wedding. I can't make the hen. And she was like, okay, I understand. I'm, I'm just sad. But <laughs> it's, it's okay. Like, she's so sweet and so polite. But I was like felt so bad lying to her but I just I knew she'd love the surprise when it came to it in the end it's really hard I just, I, it is very hard to hold down a secret like that for so long so long when you know your friend's gonna feel like shit mm. and you just want to let them know no I do care for you like, yeah. I will be there <laughs> I know <laughs> yeah no, it all worked out in the end but at the time I was like I like had that horrible feeling in myself I was like she thinks I don't care I, like, I do <laughs> but no she was so happy when it came to it so so the road to adventure, Broome, mm-hmm. is from Broome to Darwin, you were saying? Yeah. So what's the deal? So, you know, it's a bus trip, of course, but yeah. what, what's actually on the agenda? Um, so. And why did you want to go do this one, I guess, as well? I just, I definitely have an obsession with taking everything off. I feel like, yeah, I don't know. Is it, I feel like, you know, when you're a kid and you used to, like, collect football stickers or Pokemon cards. Sure. Or blah, that's how I feel about Australia. Got to catch them all. I have to do everything before I start working full time and staying okay. in one area. So part of me was like, and like, just I don't know. It was like cool because like it said like you might see salt water crocodiles on this tour and uh, where else did we go? Because it was so long ago, I'm like forgetting now. There was like loads of gorges, like Catherine mm. Gorge, and um, I can't remember now. My brain, but it was a really good trip. Like a couple weeks or a week. Uh, yeah, two weeks. It was 14 days. Yeah, okay. so from Broome to Darwin. Yeah. Do you regret any of your tours so far, by mm-hmm. the way? No, no. It was me. a little... 
the the least interesting one okay. would I would say was Perth to Esperance. I don't regret doing sure. it, but it wasn't the best one. Like yeah. I loved like out of the whole trip, I would say like Esperance was my favorite part. Like because it was it was really so pretty like like a postcard and the beach is really nice and that's like when the weather was nice as well the rest was just a little bit quiet for me and just to know and like the weather wasn't great like margaret mm. river weather was quite wet and blah 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 okay so An ideal so don't regret it but i didn't whereas like if i talk to you about like the perth to broom trip i'm like oh it's great you got to do it and yeah the broom to darwin one like darwin now is my favorite like if i my plan okay. was if the rules for the farm work and the tourism work didn't change, I was going to get straight up to Darwin in January and be like a receptionist for six months. That was my plan in the end. Why was Darwin the fave? It and so for, again, anyone doesn't know, Broome, well north, up in North Western, WA. Yeah. So Western Australia. And then the, the Darwin is the sort of the main city of Northern Territory, yeah. but it's still a long drive yeah, between the two. Yeah, long drive. Yeah, Darwin was a game changer. We just thought Darwin was going to be like quite quiet and slow, like broom and like not a lot going on and full of like older couples. I was going to say broom is very grey nomad. Yeah, like good for them. I'm happy, like, you know, but (laughs) it was just a bit, you know, I like the city life and everything like that. And yeah, it was just very quiet for me. Like it was lovely, but just not my scene kind of thing. Um Darwin oh my gosh it was uh, do you know what I felt like I felt like when I turned 18 and was allowed to go on my first holiday with my best friends when we went to Greece like you know when you leave school and you go on a girl's holiday or a lad's holiday it felt like that again you'd be like walking down the street and there'd be people oh, sorry there would be people like oh free drinks for girls tonight if you come to Maybury's like free drinks until seven but and it's like come to this we've got like a token like you get for a free shot when you come but you know like when you're walking yeah, okay. yeah it felt like and I was like Okay, oh. I was like, is it really going to be that good? Yeah. Oh my gosh, the nightlife was so much fun. Like, cool. Okay. Yeah, and uh, I did not expect this, by the way. I didn't. I was like, thought I'd be bored in Darwin. I thought I'd be like, couldn't wait to leave. Loved it. Like the hostel was really fun. Really good. Like party scene in the hostel. And then on Sundays, which hostel was that? Mum. It was called, but yeah. it spelt like M O N, like like American, like mom. But oh. I would say mum. Yeah. Um, and then. On a Sunday, the casino does uh, like a DJ set next to the pool. And so then I was like, oh, it's a bit like Dubai vibes. I was like, I'm loving okay, this. Okay. Like, And the sun was setting. Like, it was like the nicest sunset I think I've ever seen in Australia. Like DJ in the pool, drink in my hand. I was like, this is I was cool. like, I can see myself in Darwin. I was like. Damn. If I have to do the six months, I text my dad. I was like, I am coming here if I have to do the six months. I was like, I'm not going to do fruit picking or dairy. I was like, I'm going to do like receptionist wow. or something up in a hostel. You heard it here first. Mm. Darwin, place to be if you have to do 88 days and if you're not from the UK. Yeah. Damn. I said like, and anyway, like now after that, I said, I will like, because that is the dry season when we went. So I think from like April till end of August, possibly is like the dry season for Darwin. I'll make an effort to go up there every year now. I feel like like I liked it that much. Wow. Like if I just like went for a girls weekend even or like a week. I know that they've got a pretty good uni vibe up there as in like mm. it's a big hub for international students. Yeah. I think you can get a pretty good deal doing the university out of there. Oh, okay. I didn't know. Yeah, yeah. I think it's there is like a little bit of a subsidy program involved up there and they can they do better with accommodation and Ooh, it's, okay. just, it's sort of a way to try and attract more people into yeah. Darwin because it's still the smallest c- city yeah. w- well, that we have. When in the we country. was, we went to the Base in the Grass Festival and when we was there, um, the photographers that were there, they're like, do you mind if we take some pictures of you like for the social media? And we're like, yeah. And they're like, okay, can you just look in the camera and say, come to Darwin? No, no, come to the Northern Territory, move to the Northern Territory. That was it because they were trying to up. They're okay. like, we're trying to up the tourism for young people and we're trying to get young people to move here because it's not so much on the map. And I was like, in fairness, I had no interest really in going to Darwin before. It was just that the tour finished there. I didn't really know anything about Darwin. I'd not had any friends be like, where I've got so many friends that were like, oh, wait till you go to Melbourne, you're going to love it. Or wait till you go to Cairns, you're gonna, you have to go to Gilligan's, it's great. But no one in the whole time I've been here has been like, oh, you have to go to Darwin, it's 
So I just like wasn't expecting anything. Now I'm that person. Yeah, I was going to say, now I'm, you like, get to be the unicorn. Like, You've got to go to Darwin when it's the dry season. It's so good. Like I loved it. So what's the dry season for, again? I think it's April to the end of August. So like the weather, it's not like all the horrible monsoony kind of weather like yeah. and the sticky heat. It's I like a drier heat. As you get towards the middle, towards the end of September, yeah. start to move back into the wet season. I think so, and yeah. And then, yeah, that's when it's like hyper humid, hyper hot. Yeah. And then you'll have the just torrential rains yeah. coming in and out as and well. Because I didn't know if the rules were going to change or not, I started joining like uh, expat girl groups up there. I was like, I'm going to see if I can get any leads on some jobs up here. Below. And so many of the posts were like, hi, girls. Um, can anyone recommend anywhere for chemical hair straightening? My hair is so frizzy due to, to the humidity. <laughs> so like even like people's hair straighteners weren't doing the job, like because the weather's so humid, like outside of the dry season. People were like, I need a good hair serum. And like all the girls were like, oh, you have to go to this shop. Or I get this serum from Amazon, blah, blah. And I was like, okay. I was like, so if I do come up here, I need to be aware of the be frizz. aware for the hair situation. Okay. Yeah. So otherwise, stick to the dry period where possible. Yeah. If not, get your get your serum for your hair. Get serum. Ready. Serum. Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. There's all different things, but look, I, ca- I must admit, I'm not very familiar with hair care products. Yeah. But to well, to my credit, mm-hmm. as of going up to the well, Tom Price is the site. That oh I'm at, yeah, which we is, did that. Did Tom Price? Yeah. Oh, there you go. So it's super inland. Yeah. Um, old mining site. It's very. It's actually kind of cool going around and seeing the setup. And mm-hmm. it's not really. It's not a growth mine anymore. It doesn't take out that much dirt. But all yeah. the infrastructure is there. The train line. But there is a dryness that happens throughout the period. Now it's not the humid frizz, mm-hmm. but because everything is there is constantly an air conditioning unit uh, on, okay. um, which is just takes out all the moisture, and the water up there is all treated. Mm-hmm. From what I was told, I don't know how it's treated or with okay. what, but apparently, uh, either way, I was like, "Oh, the hair is like re- like I'm putting a comb through." I was like, "Oh, this is like difficult to do." Mm. Shampoo and conditioner aside, and so I started now. Now I've got this one little thing at the end, which is it's not. I don't know if it's like an anti. It's a foam because mm-hmm. it's not gel. I, I don't like gel. I don't like like the, yeah, no, 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 the, the consistency. Yeah, the no, the look. texture. Yeah. Not not a fan. But I was like, I just want something mm-hmm. to not have it look be dry. Yeah, up north, and so I found a foam. Now oh, I don't even okay. know what it is or does, except it was just like Schwartz. Oh, it was, it was it's whatever. usually good that it, one. I know the one you're on about. Yeah. Either way, I was like, it's a foam that sounds like the right texture that I'm after. Yeah. So far, I was like, okay, okay, right. deal with it. I yeah. don't have the name of it, but I look. <laughs> it's it's something along those lines. Yeah, something along those yeah. lines. So either way, a foam that would work for me. Cool. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Darwin is party hub more than we would have expected. So is it just well. the one hostel or is there a bunch up there that you can choose the from? The other one was good. The other one was called Youth Shack. I like that. I stayed there when mum was fully booked. Um, but I'd already like planned it ahead. Of, so I wanted a few days partying mm-hmm. and like socialising. And then I wanted like the night before I was leaving to have a good night's sleep sort of thing. So I'd booked a private room in Youth Shack just because it was cheaper than at mum I think there wasn't one available at mum but that was equally nice it just wasn't as like party as mum sort of thing so it depends on what mood you're in sure so Probably yeah but there's yeah there's a few hostels up there but I would say mum and youth shack are the best and then there's other ones like further down the road but they're more kind of like you know like when a hotel has dorm rooms as well it's yeah, kind of okay. like that vibe so in terms of the actual town, city of Darwin, mm-hmm. like, you, is it just, are you walking around, is there a lot there? Is it like you can walk across it very quickly? It's pretty easy, yeah, just walking around. And then um, you need to get a taxi if you want to go to the Mindle Beach cons- Casino or the Mindle Beach Markets. So, but otherwise, like, or, and there's a bus, you can just jump a bus. Um Otherwise, everywhere else is really easy to get to. But Mindle Beach Markets were so nice. I love doing that as well. Okay. So just most like, things were walking distance? Yeah, most things. Just those two things that weren't. So the casino was where it was like the pool day with the DJ on a Sunday. And then the Mindle Beach Markets was like all different food stalls and smoothies and blah. And then it's like the beach is just there as well to watch the sunset. Was there anything else that you sort of recommend people should, you know, if you're going to go to Darwin, mm. bring X, Y and Z item or did you buy anything there that you thought oh this was you know okay not really I just think well yeah just go to the Mindle Beach markets the Mindle Beach itself 
casino for the pool day if you want. Um, there's cool bars, like, but and then there was one rooftop bar we went to. Was okay, wasn't amazing, but but yeah, I just liked all the little bars and I liked the hostel. But yeah, other than that, there's there's this um place called like Crocky Cove or Crocosaurus Cove. I didn't bother with that. It didn't because I prefer Crocosaurus. <laughs> yeah, something like that. I prefer seeing like the crocs actually in the water doing their own thing. This was like where you go see the them park, in tanks. Almost? Yeah. Okay. And there's like an experience where you can be lowered down into water, like but you're in a a cylinder so that the croc can't get you but like you can be face to face with a croc but it's just like doesn't yeah doesn't, just not uh, yeah i prefer that like i'd seen them like in real life at, in kakadu and stuff like that in the water like do you see any big ones in kakadu yeah. yeah but that wasn't on that tour that was a different tour okay but still cool see so road to adventure from broom to darwin mm-hmm. hanging around darwin for a bit Mm-hmm. Had a great experience, more so than you would have probably expected. Yeah, you fly over to surprise your friend, Best friend. but the hens do. Yeah, and then you decide, you know, I'm still not traveling enough. Yeah. So before you come back, you then go, oh, where? I'm just gonna, you know, just pop over to where again? Portugal with the fam. That'd just be rude not to. It's only a two hour flight, you yeah. know. So, so I I wonder how many days uh, in the past few years, you know, have you been not on the move or yeah but in, a, in yeah. whatever based home that you've been in it feels like it's even from mental. every time that I've seen you I've been like damn you're moving around a lot yeah people like my um ex's family are based like sort of outside of Melbourne as well and every now and then they message me and they're like love your pictures they're like so when where are you settling now and I'm like oh I'm not and they're like I was like they went oh what are you doing I was like oh I'm doing a um broom to Darwin tour and they're like oh then what and I was like Oh, then a Perfta Broom tour. Then like, then what? I was like, then a Northern Territory tour. They're like, then what? And I was like, I'm just gonna send you the I'm, itinerary. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> just just keep watching. I was like, because I'm not done yet. I was, but I did say to them recently, I'm gonna move to Melbourne in the new year. Like that's the plan. But at the minute, this year, I'm like, I still have too much to do until I can feel like okay, I can stop for a little bit now. Do you do you think that feeling is gonna? Do you feel like you're gonna catch them all? Yeah, yeah. I'm like. This is like, I'm too organized and planned, obsessed maybe, because I've even said to friends, like people are like, oh, have you done Africa? And I'm like, oh, like only Egypt. And they're like, oh, are you interested in it? And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, but I'm saving that for when I'm a mum. And they're like, what, what do you mean you're saving? And I was like, oh, you know, because I think it'd be nice like to take the kids to the safari and blah, blah, blah. So like, they're like, so you're planning mm-hmm. that. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to leave that continent for now and just focus on these continents whilst I'm still- family continent. Yeah, I'm like, that's like wholesome mum vibes. I'm like, you know- I'm just going to keep doing the partying ones for now and get it all out of my system. Yeah, okay. And then I'll still Makes travel sense. when I'm a mum, but we'll do nice family trips. <laughs> like, So it's never going to stop, but the sure. style will have to change, I understand. Okay. But at least like I'll be like, oh, I did all those crazy party holidays before I was a mum. Okay. So how, how Does that mean, you know, post kids, have you got the continent that you're going to go to and explore? Definitely, yeah. Like, I want to do all the safaris in like Tanzania and stuff like that. I like, mean, after the kids have like grown oh, up, after, and it's like you oh, know, okay. the kids are now doing their own travel. Oh, and now oh, you're like, oh, that's what? when I think I'll start being a cruise girl. Okay, then yeah, you're you on know, the like the okay. yeah, the middle aged woman on the cruise, like just book for like a forty day long cruise. Hopefully, I have a husband, but who knows? <laughs> <laughs> if not, as you know, I will go on my yeah, own. It doesn't say. bother me, but it'd be but, nice. Regardless, but yeah, if not, I'll start, I think I'll go like, start doing more like, you know, like you can do the Alaska cruises and Canada and then maybe like do like the Norway, like when you do, what's it called? Like the Ford, like lakes and all that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. So but I think so I'll So when start are you going to start your own travel company? <sighs> I should do. I know a lot of people keep saying to me like, you should be a travel agent. Like, because so many people message me for like, hey, I'm going to Vietnam. What should I do? And I'm like, oh give me a minute like I've got a thing saved on my laptop from when I did it in 2019 I'm like let me just forward you that and yeah but like I actually enjoy doing it for people as well and they're like hey have you got any tips I'm like oh yeah like just give me like a week and I'll send you like a thing and yeah so yeah yeah sounds like uh I've had a friend that used to help people organize their trips it was fairly lucrative I Mm -hmm. definitely feel that you know you're probably on the same wavelength of the fact you just actually love it yeah. regardless 
and people will pay for that service. Yeah. Yeah. Just as a, yeah. Anyway, come back to that. But yeah. uh, so head over, you surprise, have a great little hens party. Yeah. You basically have no time to rest. No. You shoot over to Portugal. It was that, you know. That was one week. That was great. Yeah. We moved around. We did four, five, five places. Yeah. Five places in Portugal. So again, like even for a week holiday, I was like to my parents, I was like, okay, get up. We need to get on the train. We're getting on the train to Albufeira. And my parents like, okay. Like I just would wake them up and be like, okay, the Uber's coming. Okay. Just telling them like, right, we're getting on that bus. They were like, this is great. They're like, we don't have to do anything anymore. Like I organized the whole trip. It's and honestly, so. it is lovely when someone's done that. Mm. Assuming that it, it doesn't get to the point where you're doing things you don't actually want to do. Yeah. But otherwise, never underestimate the power mm-hmm. of a friend that's willing to organise. Yeah. It makes your life so much easier. Yeah, they were very pleased with it. Because both... Has, has anyone organised you a trip before? No. Well, mum, technically. Well, yeah, sure. When I was younger. Yeah. So that's where I think I got my inspiration and being on time and scheduling and everything like that from. I definitely got it from mum. But now she enjoys that I've took over. Yeah. Yeah. So are you, so you're going to go the same way where if someone was like, look, I'm going to plan a trip. Don't do anything, Lindsay. You can't even look at anything. Uh, How would you go with I that? I think I w- So when it's like a Contiki or like the road to adventure, I'm like, okay, like you're a professional. Quite <laughs> but like it sounds <laughs> really bad. You, yeah. <laughs> but like if it's a friend, I'd be like, well, can I, can I look at this? <laughs> like, well, I actually think it'd be cheaper if we got the train. Uh, like I think I would be like that. But then no one's. It is like, and my friends always find like it easy to like, oh, Lindsay will sort it kind of thing. So, yeah, sure. Yeah. So, but like with Contiki, it's been, it was like really nice to be like, oh, I just have to get up and be on the bus at seven and then we're t- being told what to do. And like, you pick the stuff you want to do in your free time and you pay for it. So, I hate things like kayaking. I've got no interest. Yeah. Or like snorkeling. It's just not for me. So, like, I don't tick those activities and I just tick the ones I want, pay for what I want. And then you've not got the thing of people going, oh, come on, come come on the jet boat with us. It'll be fun. But, and I'm like, no, yeah. I don't want to go on the jet boat. <laughs> I hate them. Yeah. I hate them. So, at least, like, with a Contiki, you just pick what you want. And then it's like, they'll be like, okay, it's Tuesday. So, today's the day where um, we're doing like, we're going to see Aboriginal rock art today. And you're like, okay, well, I paid for that one. So I'll go on, you know, you will go your separate ways. So, yeah. yeah. I always found, uh, it always made sense to me that those style of trips were definitely best for first time travellers, mm. people, anyone that's also maybe just not organised things before. Yeah. It is so much easier just be, uh, I'll pay for the things I want to do. Everything mm. else can sort of leave it as yeah. is. Um, it's funny you say about the jet boats. I remember mm. having the option of that and I was like, that sounds so fucking boring. Oh, um, so I'm I'm like adrenaline junkie in the sense of like I love a skydive, I yeah. love a bungee. bungee. Yeah. I just don't see how people have a good time going like that over water with water constantly hitting their face. Like I just that's not a fun time for me. I get off the boat feeling like I want to punch someone in the face, and I'm not a moody or an aggressive person. But I went on one once in Thailand, and like when we got off, my parents were like, "Are you okay?" And I was like, "Just." just don't speak to me for a minute. I was like, I was only 18 as well. And they were like, you're right. And I was like, I, I just need a minute on my own. I was like, I hated it that much. When yeah. do you, when, when does Lindsay have a bad moment when she's traveling? Stuff like that. Like, cause it was unexpected as well. Like I think, cause I went, I like, I like going fast in cars. I like bungee. Blah, blah, blah. I was only 18 when we did that trip to Thailand. I was like, oh, like jet boat. That sounds fun. But I didn't realize it was going to be vroom, 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 the whole mm like 40 yeah. minutes and just water water like that i was freezing i was shivering <laughs> and it just like kept hitting my face when i was like i actually just want like to hit someone uh-huh. and, and I, I never feel like that usually and i was like yeah i got off the boat i was like i just need to go sit down on the beach for a minute on my own and was like <sighs> <laughs> only things like that i think like when i'm not expecting something it doesn't turn out how i planned then i can get a little bit moody but usually like everything on my travels has gone pretty seamlessly yeah, yeah so so I think even last time we spoke, nothing had gone really too wrong. Yeah, and touch the s- wood. Yeah. The small things were at best small things and really only you had a couple of friends that maybe had a few hiccups along the way. Mm. So you really haven't had much in the way of bad days. Pretty blessed. Moving along. Yeah, just little things like that. See, like, planning apparently mm. seems to work. Yeah. Look at that. Mm-hmm. Um, you've done the, where were we up to? So you do the Portugal, I won't go maybe into detail about Portugal um, at yeah. the moment. But did you actually, did you do any surfing there? Was that? 
it's not my bag. No, you think? No, I'm not, not a water it? girl. No. Yeah, actually, okay. Just, just anti non water yeah, related yeah. activity. Except maybe pool, cocktail pool, vibes. Pool, cocktail vibes. Because people are like, but I've seen pictures of you on holiday in a pool. And I'm like, yeah. What about beach? A drink in my hand. Um, no, because I get annoyed with the sand. Like, oh. I'll, I'll lay on the beach. <laughs> even I'll the lay, way you said that, oh, I was like, oh, I can feel Even on annoying. this tour, everyone's like, are you not going to come in? And I said, what annoys me is when I stand in the water and then I come back to the beach and all the sand sticks to my legs and my arms and everything when I want it. So I just don't go in the sea so that I don't. Yeah, I think it's like a sensory thing. Yeah. That's like, a yeah, that's the only other thing that really annoys me is like the jet boats and sand being all over me. So I used to have... It's funny you say that as well. I used to have a sand uh, heebie-jeebies, I mm. call it. It's like the the same feeling you'll get when imagining like the nails on a chalkboard, mm. the okay. icy pole on your, t- your teeth. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. In. It's those things where that it's sort of just like your curling experience. I used to really struggle with sand. Uh, like as, in, as soon as I'd walk in it the whole time, I'm feels like I'm mm-hmm. that chalkboard scenario. Yeah. Managed to get over that because I'm living in Australia. I have to. You otherwise, yeah. what the hell? Um, but the shower thing is the the sand thing is the same. There's no, sh- uh, I can't put the shirt back on until I've had You've a had shower it, yeah. because I not agree. only the sand, but there's also the salt mm-hmm. feeling. That one there, that one, that one still triggers me. Yeah, is the salt feeling. The sand is now okay. The salt feeling, I can't. Yeah, and it's if there's there has to be a shower there. Ideally, otherwise, I'm yeah, not, I'm a bit. I'm miserable. cool, honestly. Like with the feet getting sandy, like. To be honest, but it's once like because I like laying down and reading when I'm at the beach. So like once it's all on my stomach and my thighs and things, I sit there and I'm like, I'm just not having a good time now. Is that wet sand or just dry sand? Dry or wet? Any, yeah, any it sand all on the... really annoys me. So <laughs> yeah, but even even on my trip just now that I just finished, that was my nickname. My nickname was Bag Mum because I would watch everyone's bags when they'd go surfing or swimming. Bag Mum. So I was the Bag Mum. It was great because everyone yeah. was like they could go and relax and snorkel for like two hours. Where without thinking like you know like Someone's having to keep take, looking yeah. up like has someone touched my bag or something you know, i'd just be there like with my kindle like <laughs> that reading so so what is uh what are you reading at the moment oh uh, mainly honestly just pretty much rubbish because kindle has a good option where you can download books for free yeah um so it'll be like say an author wants you to like if you like that book then you'll be encouraged to buy the other books so they'll put like one or two from their collection for free sometimes they're really good other times they're like so you're, you're practically only downloading the free ones i only really read the free ones All so right. the only this is going to sound really shallow the only book i have actually paid for this year was paris hilton's autobiography <laughs> because and that was something i really wanted i was like i'm willing to pay the money for that to be fair that is also something that i of all the people, uh, Kim Kardashian, I'd, I'd also find very interesting. Mm. Paris Hilton as well. Not that I've ever shown an interest in their lives mm. at all, but they are incredible characters who have yeah. smashed it. And so, like, all jokes aside, anyone that's climbed and made a huge amount of money and gotten a huge amount of fame, it's not, there's no small feat. It's yeah. not exactly by accident. There no. is a lot of work involved behind it. So, it's always interesting to just peel back the layer and say, like, yeah, I wanted who is to this see. person? And I'd, I'd like, I knew some, like, trauma that she'd sort of been through that she'd open up with like in the news for a while but she didn't go fully into all this other stuff that happened until you read that book she's like had a really hard time and also like I know like everyone gives her a hard time for being like an airhead being blah blah blah. and she's just like do you know what she was like I was getting money for it she's like I'm actually like she's a businesswoman really she's like I just played on it she was like like I was getting loads of hate but then I was getting paid to party she was the first influencer if you think about it yeah. people wanted her at their events and everything 100%. because people would come because like oh let's go there because paris hilton went there she, she was really the first she's, influencer she was she? and yeah. then she sort of made kim kardashian who she is in a way when you think about it so i don't know i always liked her like when i was when i was a, like young and when i was a teenager she was the it girl yeah you sure. know what i mean so i was just like oh i want to know her story so i just remember seeing only a brief snippet yeah of her in an interview i don't know how recent it was but mm. it was someone commenting on the fact that you even sound different you know she was like yeah, yeah. I, was, it was yeah. A, I was playing a character mm-hmm. like yeah everyone yeah. thought i was a stupid blonde and that's she was a fantastic way to make money yeah Fair so, play to her like, yeah 100 yeah, percent. that's what i mean i've got no issues with anyone yeah. that wants to do it i feel the only thing that's like unfortunate from my view mm-hmm. is the fact that you have to put your 
not that you have to, but that she did put her body out there. Same as Kim. Like, mm-hmm. it's a shame that that was a part of it. Yeah. But at the same time, like, you know, adult, make your own decisions. Yeah. It's just not how I would uh, hope other people try yeah. to do the same. Like, with the whole, you know, OnlyFans is now so, such a yeah, become the norm. big thing yeah. that I think a lot of people will just try it yeah. as well, which means all of a sudden that content's now out. Yeah, there There was a thing the other day that made me laugh. It was like, you know, when like mums drive like minivans sort of things, like the little cars and they have like a sticker on the back, like baby on board, or it's like the little stick people of like the family, like mum, dad, blah. Yeah, she had that in one corner of like the little family, like our family. And then she had like a decal sticker of OnlyFans (laughs) slash and then whatever her name name was. was. And they're like, and someone put the caption as, uh, I don't know if you had this in Australia, but in the UK, it was, there was like a company called Avon. And it's like where your mum just used to like sell like makeup and creams and stuff part time okay. to make a bit of money on. So it's like a catalogue thing and they get like a little commission. Blah, blah. And someone went, who remembers the good old days when your mum just used to sell creams for Avon? It's like, <laughs> and now people's mums are like to make a bit of money on the side. It's only fans. Yeah. Sort of thing. It's pretty wild. Yeah. I only saw recently in OnlyFans, it was like one of the billboards mm-hmm. when you know, people were getting oh, very I into it. Oh, I think I've seen that. Like yeah. The billboard and it was like QR code to take you to the, directly to that lady. I was like, man, I've never seen like a Pornhub billboard or yeah, another just billboard out about. of just come look at me mm, and pay for my it's goodies. It's a different world. Yeah. Like- I was like, oh, how do I feel about this? Like, I guess it's, you know, I mean, free country style. Yeah things but i was like damn i'm sure she's gonna make a lot of money but there's gonna be like a million gals who make none and get all the loss all the stick for it as well yeah Yeah. it's a really interesting one like but yeah yeah didn't expect us to go on to that yeah no (laughs) (laughs) from travels to that oh well things happen you gotta go you gotta go where it goes sometimes so you um at, at this point we've gotten you back to from so you did bring to Darwin, shot over, came back, and then coming back was what? Uh, back Both for up a few the days. Then I did Northern Territory, so Darwin to Uluru. Oh, okay, so yeah, yeah, she went down, sure. And then now I've done Perth to Broome, and then I've flown back to you today. Okay, so how was the, we'll, we'll basically catch up everyone, and then we'll just forward project a little bit, and mm-hmm. then we'll sort of just wrap up at that point. But yeah, with yeah. the Uluru stuff, so how did you good. feel getting there? Oh, it was really, I felt, yeah, a little bit emotional, you know, because like when I always like said like, I'm going to go to Australia one day. Like, and in your mind, like that's the first thing you imagine is seeing like Uluru Airs Rock. Like that's what, like my first thought of Australia is that and like Great Barrier Reef and Whit Sundays, like things you only see on the television or a postcard. So like to actually be there at sunrise and then we went there at sunset as well and at sunset they gave us like some nibbles and like champagne but I was like I've done all right I've done all right I was like I'm so happy that I'm actually I always said I wanted to do this and I wanted to come here and I was like I've done it now I'm got like I was so pretty like it was like really cool to see in real life I know it's everyone's like why do you want to go there it's just a rock like when you say to some people I'm like no but like it's cool it is I know there's a very different think about the history and the very different experience for a lot of Australia's outback. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it's probably true of a lot of other countries. I just can't speak to it as well. But when you go up north and again out towards Uluru as well, mm-hmm. the the landscape and there's something. There is a little bit of magic in the air as well. Yeah. You can't help but feel some elevation in mm-hmm. your world about what you're currently experiencing. It's a very bizarre feeling. Yeah. Um, that once you get out there, you go, oh, I kind of get what people are talking about but I always found prior to going up north photos and everything I was like oh it doesn't really look like anything Mm. that interesting is it just my my experience I was like oh it just kind of looks a bit boring then as soon as I got up there I was like oh my god (laughs) this place is awesome yeah (laughs) I love the northern territory I think that's like the best thing I've done out of everything in Australia to be honest how are the stars unreal like even though in, in western australia i've seen unreal stars as well but we did that um have you seen the field of lights yeah oh it's like so cool really was nice. that out at Uluru at the time yeah or? yeah, yeah just awesome. did it like four weeks ago yeah really nice that would have been epic mm-hmm. that's cool there's actually a observatory uh like half an hour maybe now north of perth that i've mm-hmm. actually been meaning to go to personally just because i think it's during winter as well that the sky is typically it's 
better stargazing. Yeah. And I'm just such a big fan mm-hmm. of the stars, which is why camping is like the number one. Yeah. As soon as you go camping, you get a fire and you got the stars. Every time for me, I, it just reminds me like, why am I doing this more often? Like you got this yeah, whole so crazy cosmic show above you and you forget about it. And then you go out where there's no lights and you're like, oh, I forgot. Okay, yeah. You can see this is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Shit. Definitely. <laughs> Maka. Hey, Jamie. Yo. We're hey. Prob- We're just finishing anyway. Yeah, I was going to say, we're almost about to wrap up. Brother just walked in with his <laughs> girl. They're bitch to be down at the beach. I think Hi. they just smoked a little something. Something. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Um, so, yeah. So, all right. You've basically done all of Australia at this point. Nearly. My last Nearly. thing I'm doing is South Australia tour in November. And then that's my, like, all my bucket list ticked. Okay. So, you're not going to have the bug at, you know, after then? You're not going to have some after little itch then, for Australia? No, like after then I will just do things that I know I really like. Like I'll go to Darwin once a year and Cairns once a year sort of thing. Kind of like revisit places I loved. But after that, like all the bucket list stuff is done. So oh. I will be able to relax and begin working. <laughs> As again, childcare yeah, or perhaps in travel, who knows? Who knows? who knows? I mean, yeah, I would definitely not say no to doing the travel agent thingy at some point, but just be very easy for me to fall back into early years at first when I'm in Melbourne just to get a bit of money behind me and a little routine going or whatever and then maybe after a while see if I want to change so it's not I'm not ruling it out but but I do love kids I do miss working with them as well it'll be nice and it'll be cool to see what Aussie kids are like like yeah I wonder if they're just ra- rascals just all little... I think you'll, they'll be funny I think they'll be pretty good sense of humor and Fingers crossed. Easy going. Yeah. Because <laughs> I've worked with so many different nationalities of kids now, but I've never had an Aussie kid actually in nursery. Okay. So yeah. I'm intrigued to see what they're like. Yeah. I mean, I know what my cousin's like <laughs> in Sydney, but yeah, I haven't met like... A group of... Yeah, I haven't sure. yeah, taught of a class of Aussie kids yet, so we'll see. I feel like they'll be funny. So now that you've gotten to this part of your Australian journey where mm-hmm. you've technically been moving around now for how long? Really? Since September last year. We're coming up to a year. I, yeah. I arrived on the 4th of September 2022. So, you know, you've um, p- ticked off a lot so far. Still mm-hmm. got South Australia to do. But, I mean, if you were to look back at, you know, Lindsay from a couple of years ago who mm. still waiting to go to Australia, is there anything that you'd tell her or any advice that you'd give her before coming? Uh, definitely. Uh, like, at the time, I was so angry when I couldn't come in 2020 when it was the lockdown and everything like that. But, and I was like, my life's where end. I really was like that. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm going to be the oldest backpacker when I'm there. <laughs> it's going to be so great. I was like going to my mum. I was in tears like to my mum. I was like, I can't be staying in a hostel and be 26. I'm going to be the oldest person. No, like everyone like in the hostel is that age or older even. So I tell myself that's fine. Like, but at the time I was freaking out, like, I'm going to be the old one. Everyone else is going to be young. But so that's not an issue at all. So I tell myself that. And also kind of good that it didn't happen then because obviously, you know, I said before, I had never planned to work in Dubai, no interest, never even thought it was a possibility. It was just, I got that job advert and thought, oh, that looks kind of interesting. Well, the rest of the world closed right now. What else can I do? Went there, made a load of money. So if I'd have come to Australia in 2020, I don't, think I would have done all these things that I've been telling you about and I've done, mm. I probably would have done the east coast and then just had to work the rest of the year do you know what I mean whereas yeah just now gave you the I've, opportunity you know I had the money from Dubai and then I did the farm works so and then that gave me extra money back and then now I've carried on again so yeah I would tell myself it's as much as you want to get there now and you want it to begin now you'll just be annoyed if you have to just travel a little bit like get a taste for it and then you've got to start working because then like just it just becomes normal life it just yeah. becomes like back home and the whole reason you came here was to have a new life and try new things so, yeah. so you got a little bit more time than maybe you think you do as well yeah um, and then for to sort of I guess summarize a little bit of the journey so far do you have any sort of uh you know you would you start from the west coast and move over would you just do like here's the tours that i would definitely mm-hmm. do and then work your way from there like do you have a bit of a if you were to flip I, and redo that travel itinerary how would you like 
Yeah, I had a friend ask me this recently. They're like, you know, do you prefer traveling on your own or do you prefer the organized groups or do you prefer traveling with friends? And I said, well, actually, you know, when I did Asia, I just did it all by myself and I booked and I did everything. I didn't do any tour groups and I didn't go with anyone. And I did have an amazing time and I would never change that. Um, So when I came to Australia, Australia is the first time I've actually traveled with another person, with a few girls in the beginning and then one girl for the rest. And... It's also like sort of the first time I've done organized groups, like paying for tours. I'd never done that before. So I would say to everyone, do a mix and see what you like. I'm glad I did the East Coast just with the Greyhound rather than booking a Contiki where we're like, okay, we've got to go here. We've got to go there. We've got to, we would just be like, oh, quite like it here in Noosa. Should we stay another day? Yeah, let's change the bus because you don't get charged a fee for changing because you've already paid for a 60 day pass. So you, so I would say, yeah, like, you know, do the East Coast on your own, maybe. See if you like it. And if you don't like it, then you know when you go to Western Australia, book a tour, don't don't hire a car. Because if you didn't enjoy doing that on your own, you're not going to enjoy doing the West Coast on your own. And also the West Coast doesn't really have hostels so much compared to like the East Coast where it's hostel, hostel, hostel all the way. Yeah. So. A little bit harder there. Yeah. So I'd say to everyone, try both and see what you prefer. And I wouldn't say I prefer one more than the other sort of thing. I've, you know, I do, I think because I'm an only child as well, I'm very content in being on my own. And like, even if I didn't have a friend to do the East Coast with, I probably still would have had a good time anyway. But I'm glad I did it with someone. It was really good and I've got good memories from it. I've got good memories from doing Road to Adventure now. I've got good memories from doing Northern Territory Kentucky. So, yeah, I think, and especially if it's your first time and you've not done it, you've got to try these things and see what's right for you. Yeah. So... Yeah, I like That's that. Do a little bit of a mix, you know, yeah, and see just sort how of you find go. out what works as well. Yeah. Um, final two things is where is Lindsay off to next? Because we all know that you <laughs> planned already probably the next three to six months out. Um, I've got Blue Mountains next week for a few days. And then going Which to... in Sydney, New South Wales. Yeah, sort outside. of a little bit up. Um, and then I've got New Zealand. So that's a Kentucky for 21 days. So that'll be good. So that's from Auckland to Christchurch. And do you have a party? It doesn't look that party. Doesn't it? But it's okay. okay. It's okay. Like as much as I love like the party scene, like when I did Darwin and Melbourne and everything, like Northern Territory there wasn't I when I did the Darwin to Uluru, like we weren't partying. Perth to Broome just now, we weren't partying. I can still have a good time without it, but I do need it every now and then. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, so I don't think New Zealand from what I've like read with the reviews, it doesn't seem much of a party vibe. But it's more like because we're doing touristy things every day. So, yeah. but that's fine. Like I'm excited to see all the different things. Cool. Yeah. And uh, I guess for any final words for budding travellers, people that are looking to come or not, or just uh, I think Tim Ferriss has the famous, you know, if you were to put a single word mm-hmm. or sentence up on a billboard as your final sort of like shout out to the. The um, community at large, what yeah. something like that might be. I'm a little morbid, but in the sense of just go and do it. Someone I know loosely, even just two days ago, she's just lost her brother. He's only 25. He's just randomly been uh, stabbed back home just down the road from where I'm from. It's Fuck. obviously awful. Yeah. Um, just complete random situation, you know. That's that family's life turned upside down now. And, you know a few years ago before that my ex nearly died from a stabbing as well he's a really nice lad and he didn't deserve that either just and then just so many things I know just someone like like my uncle died out of the blue from a brain hemorrhage at 32 or like just go like you just don't know what's going to happen you don't know if you're going to find out oh another girl I went to school with just two weeks ago uh she was in the hospital because she found out she had breast cancer luckily it's all fine it's been removed but she didn't get checked yeah you just don't know like so I would say I know it's scary having a big change and coming like so far away but really like life is just so short like you just don't know I'm very like happy and lucky that I'm so healthy and physically fit and able to do all these things but you know who knows what could happen in the future so and I know I'm burning so much of my savings and but I just think I'm going to start working in a couple of months anyway. It's all going to come back. If you've got the money, don't think, oh, I should save it. I should be more. I'm like, I just think just go do it. That's what my mum, dad and stepdad have always been like. They're like, just go do all the things that we didn't get to do. So 
yeah, very like not to be morbid, not to put it on a horrible end, but yeah, I was just quite, <laughs> I was just quite shocked the last two weeks. I've seen those two things exactly, just from people yeah. just really down the road from me. One girl I went to school with, and one girl from down the road from me as well. Just like, yeah, horrible. So just go and do anything you want to do. Don't leave it. Don't think I'm too old or I haven't got enough money or whatever. Just save up, do these things. I've never heard anyone regret the experience exactly. of traveling. Definitely. So amount of the costs from so far as I can tell so I think that's uh thanks for coming down Lindsay it's been awesome just you sort of walking us through a little bit of uh, your journey and thanks for giving us some helpful advice and uh I'll have to be checking out Darwin myself in the dry season as well yeah you have to do it I think that sounds like the way to go it's probably cheaper than going to Broome anyway so it is (laughs) yeah you can get really cheap jet stuff like and the the people that I just did the tour with now, now they're doing the broom to Darwin one. And I was like, I'm so oh, jealous. I, I want to go to Darwin yeah. again. Cool. Yeah. Well, um, thanks again. Really appreciate it. Who knows? Maybe there'll be a third time in the, the distant yeah. future. But see, otherwise, we'll maybe see. Maybe you'll get a working Lindsay podcast out of me yeah, one day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Uh, thanks, cool. Lindsay. Thank we'll you. Be-